Saturday, January the 14th, 1950. The lifeboat launched at 1801 hours to the 5,609 tonne British freighter Tacoma City, which was drifting in a dangerous position near the Forks Pit. M. Harris was successful in getting a boatman's license and he was allowed to carry five passengers in his speedboat. March the 20th, a letter was sent by John Arbanorth, MP on behalf of fishermen, complaining about the Harris M affair. Ben was one of the deputations sent to see him. He claimed he would have to leave Deal in the summer months because of the way his carrying capacity had been impaired. One of the provisions was that the speedboat plot must be moved from Broad Street area to a station south of South Street. This was arranged, reported in the East Kent Mercury. April the 14th, a letter from Harris M. The boatmen state that their takings were nearly half of the previous summer, and that if the speedboat continues to run, they will be driven out of business. From that, we can only assume that the difference in takings went to the speedboat. Sir, it is not my wish to deprive the boatmen, or for that matter any person, of some part of their livelihood. To prove my words, I am willing to sell to any boatman or syndicate of boatmen my speedboat Jolly Boy, complete with all running gear, landing stage, winch etc, for the nominal sum of £800. This boat is in perfect condition and will stand any survey. On the boatman's own showing, at this price, they shall be able to reimburse themselves in the first season. Thursday, April the 20th, Doc Bailey and George Budd rescued three young men when a boat they hired off Tommy Upton capsized to a little way offshore. Whit Monday, the warmer lifeboat was called out to a mystery object on the sands, which turned out to be a twisted girder from an old wreck. Thursday, June the 29th, warmer lifeboat was called out to a collision in the vicinity of the South Goodwin lightship in thick drifting fog between the ships France Comte and the Ufflington Court. The French tanker's bells were split down to the water's edge and the British ship's bells were bent sideways. Help was not needed. August the 22nd, the Daily Mail Mass Channel swim race took place. Deal supplied seven motorboats and punts and crews. The successful swimmers were piloted by Joe Mercer, Dad and Elf May. Deal Regatta Rescue Race was revived after last year's protests. This was won by Dr Bailey. Saturday, October the 7th, for the second year in succession, anglers from all parts of the country merged on Deal for the biggest event in the angling world, the NFSA Festival. 250 anglers went out and fished the two-day festival. 14,224 sizeable fish were weighed in with a total weight of over 2.5 tonnes. October the 12th, the last of the old deer pier poles were removed at 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, October the 31st, the Dean brothers go herring fishing early in the morning and catch 50 herrings. They went off again for the second time in the afternoon and caught 2,700 herrings. The titlark came ashore with 10,000 herrings. December the 24th, at 7.45 a.m. an SOS came from the Italian freighter Santa Targa. The lifeboat launched and within a few minutes of reaching the edge of the Goodwins where the ship lay with a broken back, Jim Rich fell back off the lifeboat's forepeak and died in the arms of his comrades. The ship was bound for Leith with a cargo of phosphates and had been aground for several hours. As we raced towards the Goodwins, the ship lowered its own lifeboats but one failed the falls and ended up hanging upside down alongside the ship. Lifeboatmen had to cut them adrift and get alongside. Two hands went aboard. The motorboat Carefree stayed alongside and took off most of the crew. The lifeboat brought ashore the upturned lifeboat and sailed two more during the Christmas period. <laughs>